Privacy, secret of correspondence are important human rights. Since early ages, if two people, Alex and Claude, want to converse privately, they should agree on a code. With this code, they will encrypt and decrypt their messages. And with this code, they will be able to converse privately after they physically met and agreed on the code. So that if Alex's message is meet you in London, before sending it to Claude, Alex will encrypt it. This will give something that nobody understands. Claude will then decrypt it using the code they previously agreed on and then obtains decrypted message me to in London. So Claude who received only this would be able to understand that the initial message is this one. Until the 1970s, people thought that no encryption is possible without a previous and private meeting. But then, thanks to some 18th century maths, specifically Euler's work, it is now possible to Claude to publish a public key enabling everyone to send him messages that he would be the only one to, to decrypt. He does not need to meet with Alex to agree on the code. This might not look intuitive, but you can understand it this way. Imagine a box with a key that is only able to open it and a key that is only able to close it. Public key encryption is just like putting in the public domain this kind of boxes and giving people the key to close your box without giving them the key of course to open it so that when Alex wants to send a message to Claude he just have to put the letter inside the box use the public key and close the box if someone intercepts the box between Alex and Claude he won't be able to open it and only Claude possess the private key this video won't go too much into mathematical detail but everyone should at least know the following mathematical fact if you have two numbers, P and Q, calculating their products, N, costs only one operation. So this will go very, very fast with the computer. But having N and wanting to know what are the two numbers, P and Q, especially when they are primes, of which the product gives us N, this takes several operations. And for actual public keys, this can take thousands of years using the most powerful computers. So practically, before generating his public and private key, Claude should take two large prime numbers, compute their products, publish it as the first part of his public key. Then he should compute another number, E, for encryption, which would be the second part of the public key. He would keep the number D private. The computation of E and D from P and Q would be explained in a more technical video. But just note that Claude takes two large prime numbers, computes their products, computes some hard numbers to find E and D, publishes N and E and keeps D private. E would be this key only able to close the box and D would be the key only able to open the box. When sending his message M, Alex computers, like any computer, associate a number to this message. So if the message is meet you in London, Let's say that the computer associates with this the number 101011 something etc. 11. That's a number which means meet you in London for the computer. He wouldn't send this exact number to Claude because if someone intercepts the message, he would understand meet you, meet you in London. He takes M as a number, so let's say that M is equal to this 110 etc. He would elevate it to the power of E meaning that he will multiply m by m by m e times e being the number used to encrypt make a Euclidean division he then would divide the results by n he would have something here and important he would obtain the remainder of the division which we will call in all this video rest if m to the power e is equal 22 and n is equal to 5 then we would obtain 4 times 5, the rest being 2. So the only part which would be sent to Claude is this rest, 2 in this example. If I give you 2 and 5, which is also in the public domain, you can't know that m to the power e is 22, because there are several other numbers if divided by 5 would give the same rest, 2. 42, 32 by 5 gives also 2 as a rest, 62, everything ending with 2 divided by 5, 
or everything ending with 7 divided by 5 would give you two as a rest. So the rest doesn't tell you what the message is unless you have the private key D, Y. So when receiving this rest, which is ME, so this 7 and the random symbols meaning nothing for the public, Claude's computer would multiply the rest by itself D times, then divided by N. And with Euler's theorem, the rest of this division would be nothing less than M itself, which is the message. So the secret of public key encryption is the fact that the rest of the division by something to the power E by N, if we multiply it again by itself D times, divided by N, the second rest would be the initial message saying, meet you in London. Of course, this assumes that Claude has a non-compromised computer, meaning that there is no virus or spyware in Claude's computer that goes and spy on the private key of Claude. Because if you have the private key, you can then understand, meet you in London, just reading this. Another way to break the secrecy of public key encryption is to try compute P and Q from the public key of Claude. But as I said, if you want to do this brutal force attack, it would take you thousands of years with the most powerful computer you have. Unless, of course, Claude is using a very, very, very weak public key.